Praise the Lord and God bless you. It is so good to be back with you on a Tuesday night. Can you believe that we are now already in the middle of March? Come on. We are almost at the end of the first quarter of 2024. I'm telling you, when you think about how fast time is moving, you say, God, where has the year and where is the year going already? But we're so thankful. Aren't you thankful for God's blessing to it allowed you to be able to see almost the end of March already. And come on, if you're just, you're just blessed just to be able to say, God, thank you for getting me through this Tuesday. Come on. Can anybody in the chat right now, before we get into the lesson, before we get into talking about getting our mind right, can somebody come on, type in the chat and can somebody begin to give God praise? Cause he took you through another day. Come on. He took you from last week until this week that we're able to come here here together and fellowship and get the mind of God about the way we are thinking. Come on, let's just give God praise for his great goodness and his mercy that allowed us to be able to see another Tuesday. And I'm telling you, if we are alive, we are still here for a purpose and the devil has not won and your destiny still lies ahead of you. I'm telling you, I'm grateful to the Lord for all of his goodness and all of his kindness towards me and towards my family. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Come on, come on. If it had not been, is that your testimony? That if it had not been for God who was on your side, where would you be? So I just want to again say happy Thursday, happy Tuesday, actually. Oh my gosh, I'm already rushing the week. But we are so thankful to the Lord for being here on this Tuesday. And listen, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to be, as my friend, Brother Ricardo would say, be an evangelist. I want you to tag and share and like this video. Come on, I want you to share it on uh, with your networks and with your social media friends. And I want us to be able to talk about, get your thinking right. Listen, were you, if you were here, last week. I know you were blessed. I know that, um, initial conversation began to stir you about the way you've been thinking. Hopefully in this last seven days, you began to be more aware of any negative thoughts that have been trying to come into your mind. We know that the devil is a lie. We know that we are victorious in Christ and God, we thank God that we have, and we're getting the God mind because the God mind is a victorious mind. And listen, before we go on any further, let's start with a word of prayer. And then we're going to get right into our lesson. I have a lot to talk about tonight. I'm super excited about what God has been downloading since the last time I spoke to you. And the fact that God is downloading really just confirms for me how needed this lesson is. So let's get right into prayer and then we're going to go right into the lesson. Gracious Father in God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your great goodness that has allowed us to see this 12th day of March. We thank you, Father God, that we are so blessed, God, because we are in the will of God. We are in the land of the living and there was nothing the devil could do to stop. It. And so, Father, I just commit this broadcast over into your hands. Father, those that are listening right now and those that will listen late and those that will come back to hear again, Father God, so that their word can marinate in their spirit. I pray for illumination. I pray for great revelation. And God, I pray most of all for great impartation. Holy Spirit, you speak. Holy Spirit, you talk. You minister grace to the hearers. God, you know what we need. And God, we thank you that God, you're the God who gives us what we need so that we can grow in grace and in the knowledge of you. I decrease while you increase and I speak great harvest and I bless those that are here. Blessed are our eyes for we see and our ears because they hear and we are hearing what the spirit is saying to us tonight. And we give you praise and glory for it this night in Jesus's great name and let the YouTube church say amen. Come on here, somebody. Let's give God praise again for his great goodness. Listen, if uh, most of you may uh, be aware, or you may not be aware that this month also March, I forgot to say it last time, is Women's History Month. And we are so blessed. Um, if you're a woman, uh, God didn't make a mistake in making you a woman. The Bible says that when he formed you in your mother's womb, that he took time and knit you together just how you are. And so you are fearfully, glory to God, I feel the anointing already. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. If you are a woman, 
biologically a woman, you are blessed. You are favored of God. The Bible says that favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman, come on, a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Come on. There is a makeup that, there is a beauty that Mac makeup can't give you. Come on. There is a, there is a beauty that Lancome can't give you. And it's called the fear of the Lord and the presence of the Lord. And so I want to celebrate every woman. Come on. I want you to tag another woman in the chat and say, I celebrate you. I celebrate you. Come on. God does not, uh, uh, we don't want to be women that are jealous and catty. We love who God has made us to be and we celebrate other women. And I'm so thankful to be a part of the woman uh, gender. I'm thankful to God for the great things that he is doing in my life as a woman believer, as a Christ follower. And I'm so excited. I love to, one of my favorite hit, um, Women is history is, uh, I know uh, many of you may have heard of her, is uh, Madam C.J. Walker. She was an entrepreneur. She was a philanthropist. And she was the first, I don't. I won't even say the first black woman millionaire, but she was the first female woman uh, uh, millionaire. She came from such heartache and hardship. She was orphaned. Her mother died very young. Her father died very young. And yet from those obscure beginnings, God raised her up and made her a multi-millionaire in a time where black people were not becoming millionaires, where black people were picking cotton. Come on. She was going to the bank, going to millions and employing other people. And I'm telling you, it just encouraged me because it reminded me that the Bible says that he will take the poor out of the dunghill and set them among princes. And where you begin does not mean where you're in. Come on. I want you to tell somebody tonight, tell yourself that tonight. Say where I am beginning is not going to be the place that I'm ending. Come on. The Bible says that my latter house, that come on, the latter house of this body is going to be greater than the former. And God has so many great things that he has planned for you as a woman. And so I love Madam CJ Walker. I love her story that God took her out of a place of being an orphan, abandoned, uh, without parents. And God raised her up to be a millionaire in a time where it was not foreseen that black people, especially a black woman, could become a millionaire. So let's thank God for our womanhood. Let's thank God that he made the woman. And when he looked at the woman, he said she was very good. Hallelujah. So you are very good tonight. Amen. That wasn't a part of my lesson, but I felt so uh, compelled that I had to share that, that this is Women History Month, that we want to be able to celebrate other women. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get right into this word again. Um, I want to encourage those of you that don't know about my prayer line. Every Thursday night, the Uncompromised Ministry has a prayer line that we do every Thursday night at eight o'clock. And I want you to become a part of our community of prayer. It is a powerful, not because of me, just the anointing and just a collective heart of people that want to come on to pray about the marketplace, to pray about what is impacting our culture, our society, and to empower us through the, through the movement of prayer. There is no great movement in the earth that was ever birthed out without the power of prayer. And so we have prayer every Thursday night. And if you have not subscribed, I want you to call, I want you to text the word uncompromised with the ED at the end, uncompromised to one 833 777-0313 so that you can be uh, uh, made a part of our, our list and that you will get the weekly alerts um, for the prayer. And if we're doing anything else in ministry, you can be a part of getting those text alerts. And so I want you to go and do that as soon as you can. I want you to be a part of our prayer community every Thursday night at uh, eight o'clock, we pray all things kingdom, all things marketplace, because again, there is no power greater than the power of prayer. So we want to get back. I'm going to do a brief recap, but I'm telling you, I know that last week's lesson, it stirred me so much. I'm telling you, God has really been laying on me. He's been adding um, nuggets about the power of right thinking, because I'm telling you the enemy wants to distort our thinking. Because again, if he can distort how we think, he can distort how we believe. He can distort how we view our lives, how we view ourselves and how we view other people, circumstances. Your mind is the battlefield. 
I mean, many of you, uh, some of you may have actually read one of the greatest books I believe that uh, Joyce Meyer ever writ wrote and is still one of her number one best-selling books was called The Battlefield of the Mind because that is the battlefield. If we can win the battle of our mind, we will overcome the works of the wicked one because so much starts up in here because if we, if the enemy can get us up here, he can get us in our daily activities. He can get us in how we move or we don't move. How we think, as the Bible says in Proverbs 23, as a man or a woman thinks, so is he. Listen, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting excited. So, you know, if you think small, you'll live small. If you believe small, you think us uh, uh, small, you'll live small. If you think limit, you'll live a limited life. If you think insufficiency and inadequacy, you'll always feel inadequate. You'll always feel like you're not enough. Come on here, somebody. Those are the type of negative thoughts that Satan will cause you to think. As a man, as a woman thinks in his heart. Come on, if you think big, come on, you're going to dream big. If you think big, you're going to live big. And guess what? You'll live big because you will won't settle for small because you've already seen big. Oh, <laughs> glory to God. One of, uh, someone told me it was such a powerful statement. They said, you can never go where your mind has not been. I already see myself traveling all over the world. I saw myself graduating from Hofstra University. I saw myself graduating with a master's degree from Columbia University. I saw myself after I had to tell myself, if you think failure, you're going to be a failure. The Lord had to remind me if you think you're not going to do well in graduate school, guess what? You will have what you say and what you believe. And so I had to believe. I had to think big. I had to think that I can do this. I had to think I can do all things through Christ. As you think, so are you. Your life follows your words and your life follows the way you think because how you think is what you will speak and what you speak is what you will become lord jesus i'm moving let's 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 keep going so we want to talk about um uh our thinking so the scripture as we recap really briefly from last week and then we're going to move on um into this week's lesson part two call of our lesson called cognitive distortions Get your thinking right. Come on, put in the chat, cognitive distortions. Let's get our thinking right. So we're going to overcome those distortions of the devil because that's what they really are. They're not just cognitive distortions. They're demonic distortions. They're lies. They're misrepresentations that have been sent from the devil to keep you from becoming all who God has called you to be. So let's get the main scripture of our whole teaching series, which is found very familiar passage of scripture found in Romans chapter 12, verses one through two. I'm not reading it from the King James, but I'm reading it from the CEV version, which it says, because it really captures what I want to talk about. It says, don't be like the people of this world. Don't allow the world's thinking mm -hmm, to become your thinking. He said, but let God change the way you think. That's why you're here tonight because God wants to change the way you think. If your thinking has been um, out of the will of God, if your thinking has been depressive, if your thinking has been oppressive, if your thinking has been defeated, God wants to change the way you think. The Bible says, then you will know, come on, how to do everything that is good and pleasing to him. So that lets me know that when God changes the way you think, that your life will become in alignment with what God wants you to do, what is good and is pleasing to you. Come on here, somebody. Listen, your thoughts matter. We're going back to the lesson. Your thoughts matter. Your thoughts matter because... It, your thoughts can either shape you for better or for worse. Your thoughts can lift you or they can decrease you. They can diminish you. Your thoughts can build you or they can tear you down. So the enemy knows that if I can get this person to think wrong, everything about their lives will become wrong because your life follows the way you think. So let's continue to go. Remember I talked about the scripture in Genesis chapter five and six, where the Bible says that before God began to, uh, he was going to destroy the earth. The Bible said that he saw the wickedness, wickedness of man, and how great it was. And listen to what it said. And it was so powerful in this verse. And that's Genesis chapter six, verse five. It says that their thoughts of their heart, the thoughts of his heart, this is talking about mankind was only evil continually. 
And so I want to ask you, as I asked you last week, what are you thinking about continually? I can tell how somebody's how somebody thinks about themselves by how their behavior, how they carry themselves. If you think you're something, you carry yourself like something. If you think you're going somewhere, then you are the person that won't settle just for anything. Come on here, somebody. I feel God tonight. Listen, what are you thinking about continually? Are your thoughts about your success? Or your thoughts about being the overcomer that God is destined for you to be? Come on, because if your thinking is as an overcomer, you'll act like an overcomer. If your thoughts are that you're somebody in God, your behavior will reflect how you think. So that's why you have to, I'm asking you, and then I want you to think about what do I think about continually? Do I think about failure continually? Do I think about the past continually? Do I think about what was what happened to me continually? Or do I allow God's thoughts, come on, God's information to be a part of my thoughts all the time? And I, and I remember I said to you last week that um, there was such a powerful quote that I got. It was saying that... Um, Oh gosh, it's going to come back to me. I'm going to, it's going to come back. See my thoughts. <laughs> it's going to come back to me any minute, but your thoughts are so powerful and we have to watch and guard what we're thinking, right? It's going to come back to me in a minute. So I remember this statement I made. I said, someone said it this way. Your thoughts become your words. Your words will become your actions. Your actions will become your habits. Your habits will become your character and your character becomes your destiny. Let me let me say that one more time. It said your thoughts become your words. Your words will become your actions. Your actions become the habits, the things that you do every day. Your habits become a part of your character and your character will determine your destiny. That's so powerful. All of that began from a thought. So your thought ultimately leads to your destiny, right? Your thoughts determine your destination. Woo, that's good. Somebody put that in the chat. My thoughts will determine my destination. If my destination is going to be a uh, success and power and elevation, come on, my thoughts have to be there in the beginning. But if my thoughts are defeat, if my thoughts are worry, if my thoughts are anxiety, if my thoughts are in inadequacy and insufficiency, that's where you're going to that's where your destiny is going to land at, in a place of ineffectiveness, insufficiency, not moving forward, not stretching out into what God has called for you. Come on, let's keep going. This was also something that was so powerful from last week's lesson. It really resonated with me that our we are constantly, constantly flooded with thoughts every single day. They said that a person can have up to 6,000 thoughts. Hear that, 6,000 thoughts a day. 6,000, all kinds of thoughts. What am I going to wear today? What am, am I going to have coffee today? Am I going to church tonight? Am I going away on vacation? Or, you know, or it could be just something that basic, or it could be something more serious about God. Am I to marry this person? God, who have you called me to be in ministry? Your thoughts can go from something so basic to something so complex. So this great thing called a mind is magnificently made by God. You know, I remember, and I'm dating myself, there was a commercial years ago that said, your mind is a terrible thing to waste. Mm -hmm. Your mind is a terrible thing to waste. And a part of your mind is a way that you think. And I believe that one of the key ways, and I believe it was talking at that time, it was talking about maybe drugs or something. It was so many years ago. But I really believe with all of my heart that you waste your great mind when you don't have the right type of thoughts. Mm -hmm. You waste your mind when you don't think right. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. We're not wasting our, our mind anymore. Come on, because we're getting ready to get God's mind. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to get God's thoughts. Come on, let's keep going. So again, again, we're just still in the recap. What is cognitive? What does the word cognitive mean? Well, cognitive is just another word for talking about our ability to uh, have intellectual capacity. So that deals with our reasoning, that deals with the way we think and the way we process information, the way we remember things. So cognitive has, all, has everything to do with our intellectual abilities, how we think, how we reason, how we remember. And so why does Satan want your cognition to be distorted? So we know 
that the word distorted means to twist, to pervert. He wants your reasoning, your intellect, your capacity to remember to be distorted. You know why? Because as we go back to our text, the main text of our teaching, our, if you recall from last week, he said that you will be transformed metamorpho that's the greek word for metamorpho which means to metamorphose to change to change into something totally different satan knows that if i can pervert your thinking lord jesus with negative thoughts with thoughts of your past with with the demonic thoughts of defeat demonic thoughts where um you don't you're not good enough or uh, thoughts that cause blame and shame he knows that if i can distort the way you i think that he can stop me from transforming he can stop me from becoming becoming who God has called me to be he can stop me from transforming into that giant of an individual that God has ordained for me to be he can stop me from changing into that great preacher or minister he can stop me from changing into that great daughter or great parent or that great singer if I can stop if I can pervert the way you think I can stop you from transforming into what into something brand new into something that you have never been before. Come on here, somebody. Because So the way you think will cause you to transform. If you think highly of yourself, you're going to be transformed into a higher dimension of yourself. If you think like God, you're going to become like God. You're going to be conformed, as the Bible said, to the image of his son. We want our thinking to change because we want to conform to the way God has ordained for us to be. Amen? Amen. I'm getting excited. So again, so we have the understanding about what cognition means. We talked about distortion. So distortion represents, as I said, things that are false, things that have nothing to do with truth, things that are perverted. And so when we have cognitive distortions, there, this, this is a clinical term where you have mental filters, you're filtering mentally in a way that increases your misery. So cognitive distortions, again, are demonic because God is never going to give you thoughts that's going to cause you to be miserable. That's one of the ways you know a thought is not coming from the Father. I remember years ago reading in the battlefield of the mind, Joyce Meyer said, when you think about something, where does it take you? Does it take you to a place of light or does it take you to a place of darkness? Does it take you to a place of joy or does it take you to a place of, of sadness and anger and resentment and bitterness? Come on. I, I, I can tell when I'm having a God thoughts because God thoughts elevate me. Woo! God thoughts bring me peace and shalom and comfort. They cause me to, 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 to know that God is on my side and that whatever I attempt to do, I'm going to be successful at it. God thoughts are life thoughts. Somebody put that in the chat. God's thoughts bring life. Demonic thoughts, negative thoughts, cognitive distortions cause you to be full of misery, cause you to be full of anxiety, cause you to be full of defeat. Come on, the Bible says in Isaiah 26 and 3, he said, I will keep you, come on, in perfect, in complete shalom. That is well-being, that is prosperity, that is a state of, of, of God kind of peace. He said, I will keep you, I will keep you uh, in a place of perfected peace if your mind, your thoughts, your imagination stayed, means to be fixated on me. Come on, not on me, but on the Bible, on the word. He said, when you are having God thoughts, they bring shalom. Woo. God thoughts bring shalom to your life. They, they give you peace in the midst of the storm. Come on. That's why, that's what the Bible said. Let this mind be in you. Come on. Which was also in Christ Jesus. You have the mind of Christ. You don't just have the mind of the world unless you allow it. Unless you allow your mind to be darkened and alienated from the life of God. You as a believer, you have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is not dark. The mind of Christ is not defeated. The mind of Christ is not depressed. Come on here. I feel something is breaking even as I'm talking. The mind of Christ is full of God's light. Come on. And love. It's full of his light and it's full of his strength. Come on. It's full of his light and it's full of his character. Oh God, let's keep going. And so, so, uh, these cognitive distortions are negative thinking patterns, 
negative thinking patterns. So it's not just one negative thought, but it's a pattern of negative thoughts that aren't based on fact or reality. I'll give you an example from a clinical perspective. So people that suffer from anorexia nervosa, right? They can, that's the, that's the disease where people look at themselves. That's the lie. That's the distortion. And they tell themselves they're fat. I'm fat. Oh my gosh, I'm fat. I need, I've overeaten. I'm fat. I'm fat. They could be 110 pounds, but the distortion, the lie, the demonic distortion is that I'm overweight. I've eaten too much. And so now I need to purge myself. So they go, excuse the expression, and they have to go vomit because they feel like I have eaten to the point and now I'm fat. It's a cognitive distortion. It's a lie. And so they, it's not based on anything in reality, but the demonic distortion has told them you're overweight, you're overweight. So they end up purging out their bodies to try to, to align their, 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 their thinking to how they perceive themselves. It's a distortion. Or you can have somebody who has been physically abused, physically abused. They could have been molested. They can they have been a victim of incest. They could have been a, a victim of rape, something, something a trauma that happened in their life. And so what happens, the distortion is that you, you, you end up telling yourself, uh, the enemy ends up telling you that it was your fault. Mm -hmm. That, that all of that happened to you was your fault and, and that no one will ever love you. Oh, isn't that a demonic distortion? Isn't that a cognitive distortion? What fact is that based on? Because you were a victim of something that does not mean that that is going to be the reality for your, the rest of your life. No, 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 no. The Bible says, therefore, glory to God. Come on, the new information. Come on. Cause new, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Holy ghost. New information brings you into a new season. Here's the new information. Therefore, if any man or any woman is in Christ, <laughs> he is a new creation. Lord Jesus, you are not who you were. You are not the victim of what happened to you. Come on. You're a new creation in Christ. And so the enemy tries to tell you, you'll never find really love. And everything you think about as related to love or relationship will always be perverted. No, that's the distortion of the devil. It's the lie of the devil. And I want to tell somebody and remind you that the devil is a liar. He was a liar from the beginning beginning and the Bible says he abode not of the, he, he didn't abide in the truth. He can only tell lies. And so when you start getting thoughts that you'll never be able to love, that you'll always be the victim of what happened to you, you got to tell the devil you're a liar. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus, that there is a destiny for me that God has. The old things are passed away. Come on, didn't I tell you the Bible says, remember not the former things. Come on here. Remember not the former things, neither the things of old. He said, I'm doing a new thing. Come on here. And God is doing a new thing in your thinking right now. Somebody give God praise for the new thing that he's thinking in our mind. Come on, come on, come on. You must st stop believing the lies, these distortions. What are some of the distortions, You the, the negative thoughts that come into our lives that are, that are misrepresentations of who we really are, that you're not good enough, that you'll always be in this dark, depressive state. No, the devil is a lie. Jesus Christ breaks every fetter and he makes you free. Come on, that you'll never get that degree. Come on, you've been going to school and you say, oh, it's so hard. No, 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 no. The, God, the mind of Christ says that I can do all things. Come on, that he gives me the power to get wealth, that he is the one that helps me to get, to be successful. Come on, the lies that of the enemy is no one loves me. Oh no, that and you know that's not true because the Bible says, "For God so loved the world," and you were included in that. He loves you with an everlasting love. Come on, you you he puts in your mind suspicious thoughts, doubting thoughts. Satan wants you always to be suspicious that somebody is after you and somebody don't like. Come on, that's that's demonic distortion. That's a cognitive distortion that nobody likes me. Come on, stop that. You are lovable. Come. On. And see, the reason why you may not be a person that people like to be around is because you've allowed yourself to think all the time that nobody likes you. So you put up these walls that make people not like you. You put up a personality that make people not like you. Come on. But in the name of Jesus, I'm commanding every stronghold of every negative demonic distortion to come down by the power of the name of Jesus right now. Come on. I feel a breaking even as I'm teaching right now. I feel a breaking coming in your thinking. I feel a breaking coming in your in the wrong negative patterns that the enemy has tried to, to put in your life. Come on, listen, I want you to t understand. 
that when you have these type of patterns, one of the major, major cognitive distortion, here it is, I'm going somewhere because I feel the power of God, is called ruminative thinking, ruminative thinking. What is ruminative thinking? Remember what he talked about last week? He said these are negative thought patterns, come on, that constantly are looping in your mind. They're, they're thoughts that constantly are going through your head. I'm, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. because And they contribute, come on, to your anxiety, to people's anxiety and depression. And some people are depressed because they're constantly replaying things. They're, they're replaying the betrayal. They're replaying the abuse. They're replaying, come on, the, the, the thing that happened to them. And Jesus Christ wants to make you free from all of that. Listen, when you have, when you, they, they're, they're replaying the abuse that happened to them. And so when we are replaying these negative thoughts, those negative thoughts, they become a stronghold. Lord Jesus, I'm going somewhere. Ruminative thinking, when you're constantly thinking of replaying the abuse, replaying uh, things that happened to you, the betrayal, whatever it was that really kind of set you, of course, it was a traumatic event in your life. When you're constantly thinking of those negative patterns, they're looping over and over again. The lie of the enemy is constantly replaying in your thoughts. They become a stronghold. What is a stronghold? Well, first, let's read the scripture that one of the scriptures, most powerful scriptures in the word of God about these demonic strongholds. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, very familiar passage of scripture. And I'm going to try to slow down because I'm getting excited. The Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare, come on, are not carnal. They're, they're not weaponry that our flesh makes up. They're, they're not weapons of the flesh, but they're mighty through God to what? To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and what bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So what's happening in this scripture? There is weaponry that is pulling down, that is casting down, and that's bringing into captivity. Lord Jesus. Our weaponry, which is not of the flesh, but of the spirit, what is it doing? It's, I feel the anointing. It's pulling down strongholds. It's casting down imaginations or arguments against the truth. And it's bringing into captivity those thoughts that into the obedience, into alignment with what God's word says. So a, a stronghold is any area in our lives that tries to keep us in bondage. Strongholds can be good because strongholds, people uh, that are uh, in, uh, in back in the biblical days, they would erect strongholds to keep the enemy out, to protect its participants, um, its inhabitants. But a stronghold in the life of a believer can also be negative because they are demonic strongholds. They are things that try to keep us from uh, uh, being free. They keep us in bondage or they create a prison around us, right? They, cre they create a prison or a stronghold that try to keep Keep us from breaking into into who God has called us to be, breaking out of things that have kept us locked in, kept us from our destiny, kept us from our future. And so God wants to break every demonic stronghold. Listen to this. Listen to this. I'm, I'm going. The stronghold of negative thinking, this is what it does. I'm so excited. The Bible, the, 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 um, the, my, my note says here, the stronghold of negative thoughts want to keep, what does it want to keep out? It wants to keep the truth of God's word out of your situation, out of your thoughts, because if you continue to believe the lie, you'll continue to walk in the lies. And so when you get truth, the Bible says the truth will make you. It doesn't, it doesn't set because if I set somebody free, they can make a decision whether they want to come out or not. But when you hear truth and when you receive the truth, like you're getting tonight, not only does it set you free, it will compel you to come out of what you're in. It will compel you to come out of the prison, whatever's trying to hold you. Truth makes you, truth received makes you free. And I want somebody tonight, receive the truth of God's word. Receive the truth that God's mind is your mind. Receive the truth that you don't have to stay a prison of negative thinking. You don't have to stay a prison of negative thoughts of these demonic strongholds. And let me tell you how some of these strongholds erected in our lives. How did they develop? You say, well, Minister Pippen, how did I get a stronghold in my thinking? Well, some people, these strongholds were created through trauma. They were created through some of people were physically abused. They were, they were psychologically abused. They were physically, uh, verbally abused. And, and so these strongholds were erected through lies. That's why he said, I have to cast down 
found arguments, arguments that exalt themselves. So you have had arguments that have gotten into your soul is from your thinking about who you are because somebody abused you, somebody verbally castigated you and told you you would never be anything. You were a victim of domestic violence and they told you you'd never be nothing without them. La, la, la. You are somebody because of God. You were somebody before you met them. Lord Jesus, I feel God. You were somebody before you met them and you're going to be somebody after you know them. You are not the victim of what happened to you. You are not under that person's authority or thumb anymore. Come on, Jesus Christ sets every person free tonight. Come on, Jesus Christ breaks the fat up and he sets people free tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. How do these strongholds develop? They can develop through domestic violence because the lies that they're told through these situations, the lies that the enemy begins to tell them, it was your fault. You, you deserved what you got because the lies that were told to you, they last and they're not, uh, they're not confronted. Come on. I'm confronting the lies. Come on. I'm confronting the lies of the devil tonight. He said, so the lies became the person's truth. So it wasn't God's word that was operating in your life. It was the lie that you began to believe that became truth in your life and that truth became your cognitive distortion, which became your prison. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. You had something, a trauma, something happened to you over your life, something you were betrayed, you were sabotaged, you, you were embittered, you were, you were wronged, you were abused. And the lie that came out of that circumstance, the lie that you were told that you began to believe and make it your truth instead of the truth of this, of these 66 books right here, this has to become the truth, the only truth that you recognize. Recognize. So you begin to accept the truth, the lies uh, as truth. And that truth became a cognitive distortion and the cognitive distortion became your prison. Well, I'm telling you, getting free. Come on. He's getting your thinking right. So you be, I can feel somebody getting free right now as they're listening to me in the name of Jesus. So what is our weaponry? He said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So what is our weaponry, our supernatural weaponry that is that can destroy, can tear down, pull down, cast down these demonic strongholds? Well, one of the one of the main weaponry that God gives us is the weapon of praise. Lord Jesus, I don't know about you. I tell you, I could be in, in a place of depression, but if I or if something is bothering me, my thoughts, but as soon as I begin to put on praise, and worship. And guess what? Because praise and worship takes your mind off you, takes your mind off your negative thinking and puts you on the mind, puts you in the mind that says, God is Lord. Jesus is ruling and reigning. Jesus is in charge. Jesus is fighting for me. Jesus is on my side. Hallelujah. When you begin to use the weapon of praise, the Bible says that praise is the place where God inhabits. Come on here, somebody. Praise is a place where God hangs out at. And so listen, Listen to this uh, psalm. It's such a powerful that really brings this point home that praise is a weapon. Psalms 8 and 2. Psalms 8 and 2 in the God's Word translation. Hear this. It says, from them, mouth, from then mouths of little children and infants, you have built, here we go, you have built a fortress against your opponents. Uh, Lord Jesus, you have built a fortress against your opponents to silence the enemy and the avenger. I know somebody's getting where I'm going with this scripture. Did you hear that? That praise, come on, we're talking about weaponry that will tear down negative thoughts, that will destroy and dismantle arguments and negative thinking that tries to, uh, to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Do you know that praise is a weapon? He said that when you praise, you build another fortress. He said that when you praise, you are tearing down one fortress and you're erecting another. It's a fortress against, come on, the lies of the devil. It's a fortress that will silence the enemy and the avenger. That voice of praise is going to silence the enemy. I'll give you an example. I remember... I remember I was uh, in prayer one morning and I, I was dealing with something and it was troubling me so much. And I remember as I began to just speak the word of God and I began to talk about the word of God and I began to, to proclaim. And as I spoke it out of my mouth, Lord Jesus, as I began to proclaim what God said in his word and began to raise a praise, I could 
feel those negative thoughts getting more solid, quieter. You know why? Because my mouth, Lord Jesus, 2 Samuel, I believe 2 Samuel chapter 2 verse 1. This is talking about Hannah. Yesterday, 2 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 1. The Bible says, Hannah said, you have enlarged my mouth. Come on. Over my enemies. When you begin to praise, you are enlarging your mouth over the mouth of the enemy. You are enlarging your mouth over the lies of the devil. The more you praise, the more your mouth is being enlarged. The more you declare what God says about you, the more you are silencing the voice of the enemy. If you want to silence negative thoughts, open your mouth in a praise. If you want to stop the mouth of the avenger, open your mouth in a praise. The Bible says you will erect a new fortress and he will give you the capacity to praise to silence the voice of the enemy and the avenger. Lord Jesus, come on, if you want to stop the enemy in his tracks in your mind, begin to praise God. Begin to talk what the word of God says. Begin to say what God has said about you. Begin to say what God has said about your situation. You are enlarging your mouth, glory to God, over the mouth of the enemy. And what I, another way, another uh, scripture I want to give to you about your weaponry. One of your other main arsenals, and I just talked about it, is your arsenal of the word of God. Listen to this verse. The Bible says in Jeremiah 23 and 29, listen to this. The Bible says, is not my word like as a fire? <laughs> he said, saith the Lord, and like a hammer, Lord Jesus, that breaketh the rock in pieces. So saints, when you use the weapon of the word of God, you are using it like it's a hammer. What is it hammering? What is it? What is it? And the word ha hammer there means, it, and when it, not hammer, the word break there means that scripture. It means to pulverize. It means to annihilate. It means to shatter. So when you begin speaking the word out of your mouth, you are pulverizing. You are annihilating. You are destroying. You are shattering every negative thought that the enemy is bringing in your way. He said, it's not my word like a fire. Come on. That fire that is going out when you speak the word is consuming every negative thought. Come on. That fire is consuming every cognitive distortion. That fire is consuming every lie of the devil that what he's told about you, told, talked about about your family, talked about your destiny. He said, my word will break it in pieces. He said, it breaks the rock. And y'all know a rock is something that is not easily destroyed. I mean, you have to have probably a sledgehammer. Ooh, yes, and that's what the word of God is. It's powerful and more powerful than a sledgehammer. And he said, I, my word will pulverize. It will destroy that thing that is hard, that thing that is, that seems like it's never going to break. But he said, when you speak my word, you are slinging your hammer. You are using the weapon that will pull down every demonic stronghold of negative thinking, every stronghold of trauma. He said, my word can break it in pieces. Somebody give God praise in the chat. I'm coming on home. I'm coming on home. Let me give you another biblical example of, of, of ruminative thinking. It, it, it's in the Bible. Say it's actually in the Bible and how to overcome it. It's a famous passage of scripture that we've read. It's one of our favorites along down through the years. It's and when I read it, you're going to say, oh yeah, I love this verse. But, and you probably never thought about this, that this was ruminative thinking. And one day I was in my early morning uh, time of, of meditation and, and the Lord made my eyes look at this in a very different way. And I said, God, but that's ruminative thinking. That's a negative looping pattern that's causing darkness and depression to come into the to the man of God's mind. And let me read it to you, and then you'll understand what I mean. And we're almost done. We're almost done. It's found in Lamentations, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19 through 20. This is Jeremiah lamenting about the children of God getting ready to go into or going into bondage because of their disobedience and, and how they've alienated themselves to the life of God. And as a prophet, he's lamenting over God's people being put into this situation, but he recognizes that it's because of what they're, they've done in their disobedience. And that's another preach for another day. But I want to just share, listen to what he says in this verse. This is the God, the, the good news translations. Now here, this is, we're talking about cognitive distortions. We're talking about rheumative, negative thought patterns, and we're going to talk about how to overcome it. He said, this is Lamentations chapter three, verse 19. He said, the thought the thought of my pain, that's the thought. My homelessness is bitter poison. Ooh, y'all get this? He said, the thought of my pain, my homelessness, what I'm going through 
is become bitter poison. He said, I think of it constantly. Mm -hmm. Rumen is a thinking. And my spirit is depressed. Mm -hmm. So he was saying, he said, I'm thinking about something negative, my pain. I'm thinking about the fact that I've been displaced from my home, from the place of Jerusalem, where, where we've lived under the power of God. And now I have to move. He said, it has become like a bitter poison. And for some people, your thoughts of your pain, the pain of what you've had to go through, the thoughts of your trauma, the thoughts of the pain that you has brought you to a place where you feel like it's bitter poison. He said, and it's something I'm constantly thinking about, he said, and it's caused my spirit to be depressed. That's ruminative thinking. When you're thinking about something so much and it's become like a bit of poison in your soul till you come into a place of feeling depressed. Another version says, just thinking of my troubles and my lonely wandering makes me miserable. That's what ruminative thinking is. Your thoughts can make you miserable. He said, that's all. Here we go. That's all I ever think about, right? So he said, and I am depressed. He was saying, he was saying, I got, I'm thinking about my troubles. I'm thinking about my homelessness and it's making me miserable. And that's what the enemy has wanted to do. He wants to keep you thinking about your pain. He wants to think you keep you thinking about your troubles. He wants to keep you thinking about what didn't happen. He wants to keep you thinking about your, your past and he wants you to be miserable. But the devil is a liar. We're coming after every negative cogn cognition and we're about to get the truth of God's word and we're about to walk into the light and of God's peace and his glory in our thinking. Listen, so you hear, he's saying it became like a bit of poison to me. And that's how some thoughts, people's thoughts are. Their thoughts have become like poison in their soul. Their thoughts have been made them poison in their, in their inner man because they've allowed those thoughts to play over and over again. But we're about to get some new information. Jeremiah, praise God, didn't stay there and neither can you. Listen what he said. How do I challenge this ruminative thinking? How do I challenge these negative looping of thoughts? This is what you do. You have to give yourself new information. <laughs> you have to give yourself new information. What's that new information? It's the information that comes from God's word. It's the truth of what God says about you. You got to give yourself new information, come on, to undo the negative replays that are happening in your thoughts. And so this is how Jeremiah did it. And we're almost done. We're almost done. He said, I, I want to give you new information. He said, my thoughts made, they became like poison. My thoughts made me depressed and miserable. But then in the next verse, somebody said the next verse, <laughs> verse 21, what does it say? He said, and it's a famous passage and y'all can read it in the kingdom. He said, yet my hope returns when I remember something new. <laughs> He said, my hope returns when I remember this one thing. What is, what's the one thing he said? The Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continues. And I want to tell somebody that God's mercy and love is still continuing for you. Come on, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what your troubles have been. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy is still continuing your life. You are not the victim. You are not what you were. You are not what, uh, what was done to you. You are the, oh God. The, the survivor. You are the thriver. You are the recipient of God's unmerited love and mercy. Come on, let me, I'm so excited. He said, fresh as the morning. Come on, the King James said, they are new. He said, his mercies, hallelujah to God. They are new every morning. And I want to tell somebody, you got new mercies for today. You can forget stuff. Tell the devil, I don't take no thought. I'm not thinking and remembering what happened to me. I thank God for new mercies. Every day you got to get up and say, God, I remember your mercy. Jesus here. I remember that I'm a new creation in Christ. Jeremiah gave himself new information to give him hope. <laughs> Oh, saints, you got to give yourself new information. You got to pick up the Bible and give yourself new information. Come on, you got to get... You got to hear good preaching to get good inf new information. Come on, you got to receive prophecy from the Lord so you can get new his Shabaya, so you can get new information. He said, fresh as the morning, as sure as the sunrise, the Lord is all I have. Come on, is that somebody's testimony that the Lord is all who you have? He said, and so in him I put my hope. The Lord is good to everyone that trusts in him. Say, saints, I want to tell you that the Lord. 
Lord is all you have and the Lord is all you need. You don't have to take the lies of the devil. Come on, do like Jeremiah did. He gave himself new information that gave him hope. He said morning by morning, he said, I see your new mercies. He said they are unfailing. He said they don't change. He said it's because of the Lord's mercies, hallelujah to God, that I have not been consumed because his compassions they fail not. Come on. I want to. He's saying, God saying, focus on something else. Focus on my mercy. Focus on my compassion. Focus on what I've done and not what happened to you. Focus on the new information so that you can walk into the new thing that God has for you. Listen, I want to tell you today, we're getting ready to close. Listen, you have the mind of Christ. The Bible says, for who have known, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, for who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but you have the mind of Christ. And I want to tell you today, Today, you have the mind of Christ. You don't have to accept these negative lies. You don't have to accept the lies of the devil. You don't have to. You, have, you can say in the name of Jesus, I cast down these imaginations. I take the word of God and I use it as a hammer and I break in pieces every negative thought. I don't care if mental disease ran in your family. I speak to you that you're not going to have mental disorder. You're not going to have mental disease. You have been redeemed from every curse. You've been redeemed from every curse of mental disease. I don't care what ran in your family. I don't care if depression, oppression, schizophrenia, bipolarism, whatever ism it is, you are redeemed from every curse. You are redeemed from everything that the enemy can sin. You are not what the world is. He said, be conformed. He said, be transformed. Be made a total, complete, new individual by the renewing of your mind. And how do we renew our mind, saints? We renew it by the word of God. Come on. He says, whatever things, Philippians 4 and 8, whatever things are true, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are, are, are pure, whatever things are just. Come on. He said, take those thoughts and begin to think of these things. He said, take those thoughts and begin to replace the old information with this new information. Come on. And that's how you're going to break, hallelujah, the power of cognitive distortions. You're going to break the power of depression. Come on. Jeremiah said, when I was thinking about my misery, when I was thinking about my pain, he said, it became bitter in my soul. He said, but then I recall one thing. He said, I remember God's mercy. Ooh, I feel God, saints. He said, I remember the mercy of the Lord. I remember that they don't fail. Come on. I want you to remember that God's mercy is extended to you. I want you to remember that God loves you with an everlasting love. I want you to remember that God has given you a new mind. When you got born again, you all have the mind of Christ. But you got to renew your mind through this word. Your mind, your soul is not saved. Remember your spirit, your soul, and your body. Your soul, your soul is not saved. Your soul has to be brought into conformity to the word of God. That's why you have to constantly keep the word of God in your thoughts. You have to constantly hear good preaching and teaching that will give you new information, God's information, so that your mind can be renewed. And when your mind is renewed, when your mind is renewed, get ready to be transformed. Come on. He said, be transformed. Have a metamorphosis. <laughs> By the renewing, come on, by the renewing, by the renovating, by the moving of old and bringing in new. Come on, some of us need a renovation in our mind. We need, we need to move our old furniture and bring in some new furniture. We need to bring in God's mind, his information, so that our thoughts can be transformed. And we can be transformed into the image of who God has called us to be. Come on, remember, you will never rise any higher than the level of your thought life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today. Oh, Father, I bless you, God, because I feel the, the freedom of God on the day. God, I thank you that you're setting somebody free tonight. They heard something, God, that's changing the way they think. They're, that's delivering them from negative mindset and negative demonic constructs that have been, oh, God, become strongholds because, God, they, told, they were told lies and they began to make that lie their truth. And that truth became a cognitive distortion and the distortion became a stronghold. But, God, I thank you that those strongholds are coming down tonight. I thank you that through the truth of your word, God, that those negative strongholds are coming down in the name of Jesus. And God, we're taking into captivity every negative thought into the and bringing it into the obedience of Christ. Father, I thank you that as we renew our mind, we're being transformed. Transformed into who? Transformed into the image of your son. Transformed into the person that you've always ordained for me to be. Father, I am not who I was, but I am who the word says I am. I am blessed. I am 
anointed. I am appointed. I am favored. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I give myself God information. And I thank you that God, as I begin to open my mouth in praise, that you enlarge my mouth over my enemies. That Father, as I praise you, you will silence the voice of the enemy and the, and the, and the avenger. Father, I thank you that as I praise, I raise. Thank you for raising us up through praise and giving us your mind and your thought processes in the name of Jesus. And I give you praise and for it now. Thank you for every stronghold being destroyed to now. I, I command people not to be set free, but to be made free by the power of Jesus' name. And I give you praise and I give you glory for it. Come on, somebody on the live right now, begin to clap your hands and begin to praise God. I feel the power of God. I command you to be made free. I command you to be transformed. And I command that stronghold of demonic thinking to come down, never to be erected again in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Woo. Well, saints, that's what God gave me for tonight. I feel the presence and power of God. Somebody is getting made free. Somebody is getting made whole. And listen, I got one more night to go and we're going to talk a little bit more. I thought I was going to talk a little bit more about the specific co other specific cognitive distortions. But this is where the Lord had me to be. And I know that this is what God wanted to minister on tonight. And you come back next week so that you can hear the conclusion of the whole matter. I pray that you're being blessed. And listen, I, again, if you've been blessed by this ministry, I want you to share the, the broadcast. I want you to like it and invite somebody to listen in and, and come back and listen. Let the word marinate in your spirit again. And join me right here again on next Tuesday night as we hear the third part and the final part, I believe, of cognitive distortions. Let's get our thinking right. God bless you and God keep you. That is my prayer. Thank you again for joining me on this live teaching broadcast with Minister, your sister and friend, Minister Raquel Pittman. I love you. Be blessed. And until next time, remember, always remember to remain uncompromisingly righteous. God bless. Bye-bye.